just do their job. Indeed. Thanks for being with us. Always fun having you here. See you next time on The Chase Australia. Americans defy the curfews face to face with police and troops. Tonight, rioters and looters Whoa. clash with police in New York. At the White House, thousands face off with a wall of police. Soldiers deployed across 23 states, standoffs in hundreds of cities. Back home, criticism from the Commissioner and calls to charge a Sydney policeman who kicked a teenager to the ground. Australia in recession for the first time in 29 years, but the share market continues to strengthen. A cowardly, vicious assault, a delivery rider kicked and robbed in Western Sydney. From the city to the southwest in half the time, weeks away from opening part of the new West Connex tunnel. And 70% off the incredible deals to get cruise ship passengers back on board. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. Long lines of police have descended into the heart of American cities, cracking down on looting and rioting as curfews rolled out across the country. Close to 10,000 people have now been arrested in the country's uprising, but tonight, 24 hours after the president threatened military domination, officers have changed tack. Peaceful protests allowed to go on well after lockdown as police try to weed out the violence. Whoa. Hours after curfew, police attacked. <laughs> Looters beaten and rounded up by protesters. Lockdowns ignored in the face of immense force in the capital. It is now after curfew, but the only police that we can see are behind this fence. On the other hand, we've seen hundreds of protesters flooding the scene, wanting to be here for this moment. Before a fortified Lincoln Memorial Thank you. and a padlocked White House. <laughs> The crowd is defiant as night came, facing off against a wall of arms. We're not who start firing through the fence. <laughs> on those who won't leave. Hollywood Boulevard. Police surge early, standing on the stars. National Guard boots on the Walk of Fame and Sunset Boulevard. Reporter Paul Caddock there as lockdown loomed. Again, how quickly things can change just a few minutes after Hollywood Boulevard was full of protesters, peaceful protesters. Something has happened and now it is full of police. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! As curfews rolled across the country, city after city rallied back. From Broadway to Portland, protesters filled streets. And tonight, for hours, peaceful marches were left to move. <laughs> New York's 11pm curfew last night, disastrously late. <laughs> America's largest police department lost control. The NYPD and the mayor did not do their job last night. Look at the videos. It was a disgrace. I believe that. Tonight, lockdown came at eight. New York's refused the National Guard, choosing to stamp out violence itself. Shifting tactics, mostly avoiding combat, the night after President Trump threatened military domination. Today, he drove past protesters. On his way to another religious moment at the shrine of St Paul II. With the First Lady, a photo opportunity slammed by religious leaders for a second day. The president held up the Bible at St John's Church yesterday. I just wish he opened it once in a while. Asked to comment on his neighbour's violence, Canada's uh. Prime Minister took 20 long seconds to find the words. We all watch in horror and consternation what's going on in the United States. Into the night, police rounded up lawbreakers. They're just uh, going one person at a time. It's not over, but night eight is the calmest so far.
And Amelia Brace is live for us once again in Washington, D.C. Amelia, quieter there tonight, but the president is preparing for more force. Yeah, that's right, Mark. Donald Trump did say that he would use military force and there are now soldiers here on standby. In fact, the Pentagon has mobilised around 1,600 active military here in the D.C. area. As for the president, he today praised himself on Twitter for bringing this situation under control. But there is still widespread violence across the country. Overnight, uh, we did see a police officer shot dead by a looter in St. Louis and that looting is continuing in many states but it is fair to say that it was a lot more peaceful here today and certainly much more calm. Mark? Yeah, a safer day where you are. Amelia, thank you. Paul Kadak is on the other side of the country in LA. Paul, are people there respecting the curfew? Well, Mark, in a city of more than 12 million people, for the most part, yes, but the LAPD has still made plenty of arrests tonight. Not far from us here, dozens of people were picked up, not for looting or violence, they were mainly protesters, part of today's rallies who refused to go home after the curfew came in. With the National Guard deployed and a significant police presence too, the streets have been largely quiet. After a day of rowdy protest, Hollywood is almost silent and as the city of Los Angeles is locked down for a fourth night people here are left wondering just how many more will there have to be. Mark. OK, Paul Kadak in LA, thank you. Minneapolis has taken the first small step in addressing decades of police brutality targeting black residents. It's launched a sweeping civil rights investigation of its own police department as calls grow for all of the officers who were there when George Floyd was killed to be charged. In a city George Floyd once called home. Thank you. They marched. 60,000 people, some on horseback. Demanding justice for a son, a brother, a father. He will never see her grow up, graduate. He will never walk down the aisle. Roxy Washington and their six-year-old daughter Gianna remembering George and demanding charges be laid against all four officers. They get to go home and be with their families. Gianna does not have a father. Donald Williams was there when Mr Floyd was killed. It still haunts him. He's not moving. And like so many in America, he thinks they should all face justice. Yeah, they killed the human being. We expect the other officers to be arrested before George Floyd is laid to rest. That will happen at a private service in Houston early next week. Joe Biden expected to attend. This is a city that has lost faith and trust in its own police force. The governor announcing today it's filed a civil rights charge against the department, investigating a decade worth of conduct. Today is a step towards that deconstruction of systemic racism. Putting America's painful history of lethal force back into focus. Just last month, Breonna Taylor, a paramedic, killed while she slept. Botham Jean murdered inside his apartment by a white police officer. Walter Scott shot in the back as he ran from police after being pulled over for a broken taillight. Eric Garner put in a chokehold in New York. He suffocated. Tonight, new video from Florida. You got your knee on my man's Come on, neck, man. man. That officer now placed on administrative leave and in Atlanta. We felt like we were going to die in that car. Four more officers charged, accused of using excessive force <laughs> to arrest two college students heading home from a protest. This is an entire generation that has to deal with brutality and injustice and wrongdoing for nothing. But for the daughter of George Floyd, hope her suffering will count for something. That changed the world. In Minneapolis, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. A Sydney police officer is being threatened with private legal action if he's not charged over the forceful arrest of an Indigenous teenager in Surrey Hills. But the police union says the junior constable had been threatened with a broken jaw and was doing his job. 
A sign of solidarity for protests across America from the father of this 16-year-old. What was that? What? Oi! Arrested after threatening an officer at Surrey Hills. The use of excessive force used upon him is unnecessary and irresponsible. I'm still in shock, really, and... Um, I never want to say that. Her son was treated for injuries, including chipped teeth, and released without charge. The junior constable is on restricted duties while his actions are investigated. Are you sorry? No, look, from my perspective, absolutely. We certainly could have handled that situation better. The police union standing by the officer. What we saw there was disgusting behaviour threatening to break a police officer's jaw. The response from the police was not unprovoked. The family wants the officer to face court. If charges aren't laid, Quickly, we are instructed to launch a private prosecution. It follows last night's march through Sydney to support US protesters. The pain and the anger felt in America has resonated with this crowd, but organisers of this protest say it is an opportunity to bring attention to injustices suffered in this country. The Aboriginal deaths in custody are just as real in this country as they are in America. The protest was peaceful, but this sign of violence drew an angry response from the minister. I was absolutely disgusted to see that. More protests are planned. Black Lives Matter! We have a pro process here where people are allowed to protest peacefully. Uh, we will support that. Miley Hogan, 7 News. Australia is in recession for the first time in almost 30 years. The summer bushfires and corona crisis have combined to shrink the economy in the first few months of 2020. Gross domestic product fell 0.3%, slightly better than economists had predicted. But Treasurer Josh Frydenberg warns the worst is yet to come. The admission Australia had to have. Is this Australia in recession today? Well, the answer to that uh, is yes. The first in 29 years, the economy battered by bushfires locked down by the coronavirus. This was the economists' version of Armageddon. Economic growth shrank in the March quarter, negative 0.3 of a percent. Two negative quarters make a recession, but the Treasurer isn't waiting for the June result. The June quarter, the economic impact will be severe, far more severe than what we have seen today. This long run of growth was created by Hawke and Keating, it was defended by Rudd and Swan, and it ends under Morrison and Frydenberg. The figures showing spending down 3.4%, savings up 5.5%. This is the largest quarterly decline in consumption in 34 years. Not in everything, though. Australians smoked less, tobacco down 3.9%, but drank more, alcohol up 3.5%. It's still going to be the worst contraction we've seen since the 1930s Great Depression. Politically, Josh Frydenberg made a smart decision, declaring a recession today, knowing he'd only face three months of uncomfortable questioning when the answer is obvious. And when compared with the rest of the world, Australia's economy is proving resilient. The Treasurer hinting the $1,500 a fortnight JobKeeper allowance might be reduced after this month's review. Bearing in mind that some people are getting paid more than they would otherwise get. Three decades since this... This is a recession that Australia had to have. Now, the recession Australia couldn't avoid. Mark Riley, 7 News. News of a shrinking economy was brushed aside by Australia's share market because it was slightly better than investors had feared. Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton joins me again. Gemma, how strong was the market today? Well, Mark, proving once again it's all about expectations when it comes to the share market. The ASX 200 today added 106 points to finish 1.8% higher. But the Aussie dollar stole the spotlight, reaching a five-month high of 69.8 US cents before softening a little and still failing to break through that psychological barrier of 70 US cents, for now at least. Meantime, more bad news for car dealers. New vehicle sales fell by more than a third in May. That was compared to a year earlier, with fewer than 60,000 sold across Australia. Only Toyota and Kia were able to steal market share from rivals, as all brands saw sales drop in the month. Mark. OK, Gemma, thank you. A month ago it was unthinkable, but New South Wales has now gone an entire week without a single new case of coronavirus in the wider community. It's good news for cinemas, now pushing to reopen in time for the school holidays and hoping to woo fans back with cut price tickets.
James Bond. Just when cinemas needed saving, big screen heroes might come to the rescue. We've had some big movies pushed back to later in the year. James Bond movie, Tom Cruise in Top Gun. Hoping blockbusters will revive an industry still locked down, but seeking government approval to resume by the July school holidays. With checkerboard style seating, washing down seats after every use, online tickets only. Winning moviegoers back with $10 admissions. Significant gap between you and I and um, hopefully that's enough to make people feel very safe. As services cautiously reopen, there's a coronavirus milestone, a full week since the last locally transmitted COVID case, but a virus not yet eradicated. You'd certainly like to see at least two weeks and probably more like four weeks without any local transmission. Juniors are returning. Now adult sport wants the start whistle. Rugby League says it needs it by July 18, AFL by August. Our desire is to play a traditional season for a premiership. Many rules being relaxed, but certainly not on the roads. A warning today from police ahead of the long weekend. Random breath testing is back with new measures to guard against COVID infections. The machines that they use will be cleansed every 15 minutes. Drink drivers on notice. Chris Maher, 7 News. The Hume Highway's been closed between Yass and Gundagai by a truck fire that's blocked the northbound lanes. Drivers are being urged to use the Olympic Highway and Burley Griffin Way via Cootamundra. A violent thug is on the run after kicking and robbing a young food delivery rider. The brutal assault captured on security cameras. But the victim, who'd only just joined Uber after losing his previous job due to COVID-19, managed to outsmart his attacker. While on a break between deliveries, a stranger strikes. The suspect demands money from Uber Eats rider Curran after pulling a knife at Wentworthville Station two weeks ago. I was scared, but uh, I thought I'm not giving him money. It certainly is a cowardly and vicious attack on someone who is just sitting there. With his wallet hidden in the delivery bag, the 20-year-old IT student had a plan. Curran knew the bank was near a pizza hut that was still open at 10pm. Despite being held at knife point, he bravely broke away from his attacker and made a desperate dash into the restaurant. He also told me that uh, don't do any stupid thing, don't run or don't do anything like that, I'll stab you. The man took off and went back for the delivery bag, scooter and helmet. Curran then jumped in with a Pizza Hut delivery driver to find the attacker. They spotted him riding past on the scooter and they chased him for almost a kilometre before the suspect disappeared into this park. No doubt we are desperate to get him off the street. Another cruel blow for the young student who's only been in the job for two months after losing shifts at a restaurant due to COVID-19. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. The state government has flagged a crackdown on alcohol home delivery operators. An investigation has revealed some are breaking the rules, even delivering to schools and playgrounds and not checking whether buyers are over the age of 18. The past few months has seen a boom in the alcohol delivery business, going from around 4% of all liquor sales last year to nearly 9% now. But not all providers are following the rules. There's a lot of good players that are doing the right thing, but unfortunately the Cowboys are taking advantage of some gaps in the law. An investigation found operators delivering booze to schools and playgrounds. One delivered after the legal alcohol trading hour of 11pm and another failed to ask for the customer's over 18 age verification. Anybody that knowingly does the wrong thing uh, should be penalised and we wholeheartedly support uh, enforcement in that regard. The loopholes due to liquor laws that are more than a decade old. Now the state government is drawing up new legislation to target online sales and deliveries with dodgy operators to face hefty fines. And we're largely pleased with the draft bill as it currently looks um, because it closely, closely reflects our existing online code of conduct. Another proposed change, an end to dropping alcohol at the doorstep, something authorities found minors were flouting. You cannot leave alcohol unattended at the doorstep because that is just inviting a problem to happen. Cameron Price, 7 News. Time now for a check on our weather. Here's Brownie. 
Fergo, lots of sunshine today as forecast. Having said that, a dry southerly wind packed a bit of a chill over our coastal suburbs. Right now in the city, it's sitting on 15 degrees, but it feels like 11 in that uh, southerly breeze. Statewide, well, fine, partly cloudy, believe it or not. Maximum temperatures close to average for this time of year. Now, the fine weather should hold for a number of days until a southerly surge strikes during Sunday. Here it is pushing through, driving just a few showers over our part of the world. Tomorrow, though, our forecast model paints this. Yes, fine, partly cloudy conditions for your Thursday. Right now, we look at current conditions. 15 degrees in Bondi. Feels like 9 degrees in that southerly wind. In Penrith, well, it's 14 degrees. Local forecast in detail. Top of the hour, Fergo. OK, David, thank you. A judge has launched a stinging attack on two violent inmates who stabbed a drug boss. Next, the extraordinary dressing down in court and the young man's surprising reaction. Also, the hunt for arsonists after luxury boats were torched in a fiery midnight attack. Why talk show host Jimmy Fallon has apologised for a 20-year-old skit. Later, the new West Connex tunnel just weeks away. But how much will it cost drivers? And in sport, rising league star Moses Sully repays a debt to the Sea Eagles. Seven News, brought to you by Aussie. Home. It's not just a place we're stuck in. It's home cooked meals, home workouts, home schooling, working from home, home movie nights, and movie days. It's see you when I get home. Your home means more than ever, and so does having the right home loan. To understand your options, go straight to Aussie. We'll help ensure you have the right loan for right now. His dad doesn't have long left. If I can see him in his element doing what he loves, then I'll always have something great to remember him by. I've never played in front of my son before, so that makes this the biggest gig of my life. 19 years, six months and 23 days it was the day that I found out that I was a dad. This is for you, my son. Home and Away, weeknights on 7. Meet the crew. They got their own way of bed. And this is me. I've always got the answer. Make this NRL season one to remember. If your team leads at halftime, you win. That's right. Lead at the half and we'll pay you out straight away as a winner. Points bed. Tough, refined, exceptional value. A BT50 stands out. At the Mazda Standout End of Financial Year event, get a 2019 plate Mazda BT50 XT 4x4 dual cab with ABN bonus from 37490 drive away. Get AHM hospital cover from only $15.75 a week. Yay. It's that easy. So you can get back to doing whatever it is you like to do. Hey. Even that. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. The Good Guys Doorbuster deals are on now. This high sense 58 inch TV only 795. This Bosch dishwasher only 895. This Dyson V11 motorhead vacuum only 949. And this chest freezer for 395. Plus, loads more only at The Good Guys. Stratco has all the offers you need during the Stratco stock take sale. Get 72 months interest free on patios and sheds and pay nothing for the first 12 months. Or get a $500 gift card on an outback patio. T's and C's apply. So, you bring the dream, Stratco will bring the how to. So, how do you hummus? There are so many ways to enjoy the hummus. At home, we add our own touch and share the hummus. Whether you snack it, spread it or dip it, you hummus with Obella, of course. Drive now, pay later on selected Volkswagen Amarok's and vans. Hit the ground rolling with your first three monthly repayments on us. Plus, get a 1.99% interest rate. Volkswagen. Meet the crew, they got their own way of bed. And this is me, I've always got the answer. Make this NRL season one to remember. If your team leads at half time, you win. That's right, lead at the half and we'll pay you out straight away as a winner. Points bed. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Welcome back. A suspected arson attack has destroyed three luxury boats and damaged two others at a Gold Coast marina. Witnesses saw two men throwing something, igniting the inferno that spread quickly. Damage is estimated at over $2 million. Detectives are hunting the attackers, one described as Caucasian with a beer gut and long hair. 
A judge has given two young men an extraordinary reality check as she sentenced them for almost killing Melbourne crime boss Tony Mockbell. She painted a shocking picture of the pair's future if they don't change their ways. Tara Bennett and Eldaya Tawera nearly killed drug lord Tony Mockbell to impress their mates. Today, along with an extra nine years in jail, they got a harsh dose of reality. You may think you're heroes within the jail, but do you think in 20 years' time that's going to matter? When you're out on the street desperately trying uh, to score and know where to live? Judge Liz Gaynor predicted a bleak future for the two young thugs. You'll have six kids by six different mothers. And if you're still using, you'll probably assault them. They'll be kids you never see. Her extraordinary seven-minute spray didn't let up on them or their gang of Pacific Islander inmates known as the GFAM. Let me tell you, gentlemen, in a few years, GFAM and the bros are not going to do it for you. Bennett and Tuera stabbed Mockbell seven times, putting him in a coma. But according to Judge Gaynor, it's not reprisals they should fear, rather a dismal future as ex-con losers. Nowhere to sleep because everyone's sick of you, because you've burned everyone off, and all your GFAM brains are scattered dead or in jail somewhere. While the judge didn't hold back, just how much sunk in is questionable. They joked and smiled as she dressed them down, enjoying their newfound notoriety. The only reason you are getting any attention is because it was Tony Mockbell. There's plenty of support on our Facebook page. Good on you. People need wake-up calls. We need more judges like this. You will end up drug-rattled, lonely old men. Tegan and Dolling, 7 News. People around the world have marched in solidarity with US protesters as anger over the death of George Floyd goes global. In Paris, demonstrators took a knee, shouting justice while defying a police ban. That sparked clashes with riot squads. An anti-racism protest in Brazil also ended in violence with officers firing rubber bullets and tear gas to disperse the crowd. Peaceful protests were also held in Israel and Berlin. American talk show host Jimmy Fallon has apologised for his blackface impersonation of fellow comedian Chris Rock 20 years ago. I love this person. I respect this guy more than I respect most humans. I'm not a racist. And I realise that I can't not say I'm horrified and I'm sorry. Fallon says he'd been advised to stay silent on the controversy but instead wants to learn from his mistake. A man has gone on trial accused of a senseless murder in Sydney South Next, the bizarre reason he claims he was forced to kill. Also a new clue in the hunt for a man over a baseball bat bashing in Auburn. A colourful tribute to at least 33,000 virus victims as more European cities emerge from lockdown. And how volunteers work together to save a stranded dolphin. That's next. Hello, Angela. Are you ready for Monday, 7.30? I came from Africa with nothing but a suitcase. My family is everything. I love my children. At home, I'm a mom. At work, I'm a boss. I can be all that and more. I got a baby. <laughs> I am Big Brother, and I've chosen you. I'll do anything to win. Oh, really? How do you plan to eliminate the others? I will sweet talk you during the day and I'll vote you out at night with a smile. <laughs> mean, but I like it. <laughs> I am Big Brother and I'll see you Monday, 7.30. 7. Hi Australia, I'm Luke Mangan. Tonight is all about real food, comfort food. My roast pork chop, caramelised apple and spiced pumpkin. Let's get cooking. Okay, step one, you need half a button up pumpkin, a bit of salt, some pepper, and you can spice it up with anything you like. Tonight, we're gonna to use some fennel seeds and get them in there and some good olive oil. That's gonna go into an oven of about 200 for about half an hour or so, or until tender. All right, for the apples, peeled. Now we just quarter them, take that little core out. Okay, next step, we're gonna get these two beautiful Aussie pork cutlets. Bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, and today I'm gonna to use some coriander seeds. Ground coriander on both sides, that'll give it a nice little bit of flavor. And what we do then, a good splash of olive oil to a medium to hot pan. Now, we wanna get these beautiful pork chops in this pan for about two to three minutes on both sides. 
and then we're going to throw in those apples. Just put in about a teaspoon of butter with those apples, and they go in to the oven about 180 or so for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the thickness of the pork. So that's just out of the oven, about 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to add a bit more butter. I'm going to add the sugar, which is going to help caramelize the apples. I'm going to add a little bit of this brandy. If you like brandy? And then a little bit of vegetable stock. And just bring that to the boil, and that will be your beautiful sauce for these pork chops. And now, a little bit of broccolini with chili. So in a medium heat pan, a little splash of olive oil. I'm gonna throw in a few bits of broccolini. I like just to toast or roast this broccolini in a pan. Good pinch of salt. You just gently do that for about three to five minutes. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of chili in there now and a splash of vegetable stock. So we're ready to serve. Look at this pumpkin, Jess. Scoop that out. How good is that? Then we've got the broccolini with a bit of chili. And then to finish, pork chop with that beautiful caramelized apples and that amazing sauce. And there you have it. Australia, my roast pork chop, caramelized apples, spiced pumpkin. Enjoy. Welcome back. A man who shot dead a WestConnex worker in a camper van in Sydney South allegedly thought he was a spy and was killing a rival operative. Police say Simon Stojic was spotted later at the crime scene happy and laughing. Paranoid and psychotic, a lethal combination. Not for Simon Stojic though, but Brett Jardine. The father of Threed's body was found in his camper van. From Victoria, he was working on the West Connex project. His killer worked nearby and was convinced someone was hunting him down. Stojic thought he was a CIA member, a trained ASIO member, and that he was a special agent for the Queen, that he had a mission for her and that she had an aeroplane ready for him at Bankstown Airport. Just minutes before Brett Jardine was shot and killed, he called triple zero telling operators there was a man hanging around his camper van kicking in his door. The prosecution says that was Simon Stojic. He even returned to the crime scene the next day, it's alleged, and spoke to police. Is it murder or suicide, he asked. What's going on? Why are you trying to see the body? I know it's murder, he responded. Police say he appeared happy and was laughing. Stojic was arrested days later. Police search warrant! Open the door! Seized during the raid, a rifle and almost 3,000 rounds of ammunition. Stojic says he shouldn't be held liable for the killing because he was mentally unwell. That will be up to the judge to decide. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. A man has been beaten with a baseball bat during a robbery at Auburn. The 22-year-old went to a corner store last Thursday. It's alleged Ahmed Lakis was watching him, then outside, stole his bag and beat him so severely the bat broke, leaving the victim with a brain injury, a collapsed lung and fractures. We've arrested one man involved in this crime, but uh, we really need to, the community's help to uh, point us in the right direction of the second uh, man. He's of Middle Eastern appearance who was driving a white Camry with the registration DWP64M. In a major change for our courts, juries will be given the option of a new verdict. The finding of not guilty by reason of mental illness will now be replaced by a verdict of act proven. This is about uh, respecting victims. It's also about improving community safety. In another landmark change, juries in pedophile cases will now be allowed to hear if the accused had a previous sexual interest in children. It's been described as the worst property deal in the state's history. Now the opposition is calling on the New South Wales government to take back the historic Campbell stores in the rocks. The heritage listed site was leased to a private developer without a tender and has since been plagued with problems. Empty, another dining precinct deserted. However, this was before the lockdown. We need an independent inquiry uh, with a view to take back these leases. Australia's oldest bonded warehouse, the heritage listed site, was leased to a developer for 55 years without a tender. At least five restaurants have pulled out, one alleging deceptive and misleading behaviour by the leaseholder Talawalada and its CEO Christopher Drevis. They claim they were misled and deceived by you? That comment. Seven News has learned prominent businessman Eddie Eunice, owner of ProLine Steel, is the latest to pull out of Campbell's stores, owed hundreds of thousands of dollars, his two restaurants canned. 
Seven News also understands that no rent is being paid by the one restaurant and two pop-ups here. This restaurant is aptly named. Under the head lease, anyone who takes a sublease at Campbell Stores must be in good financial standing. But the man running this seafood restaurant had his Bondi Eatery Pacific Club placed in administration, providing yet another lever to potentially cancel the lease over this entire trouble-plagued development. In addition, we've learned some contractors are owed hundreds of thousands of dollars. The developer stands to make up to $80 million if they sell their stake. Tallawallada and the Department of Planning declined requests for interviews. You can read all statements on our website. Brian Seymour, 7 News. The boss of a Sydney company ripped off by a trusted employee of hundreds of thousands of dollars has told of his shock at being scammed. Susan Ma was due to be sentenced today, but that was delayed, with the magistrate forced to hand over the case. As the office manager of a city engineering firm, Susan Ma betrayed her position of trust. Will you pay back the money? Will you pay back the money that you took? Within weeks of starting her job at WMA Water in March 2017, Ma began a three-year crime spree. Why did you steal so much money? Taking cash that should have been paid into company coffers, instead putting it into her own bank account. She stole more than $418,000, even covering her tracks by paying some suppliers in instalments. I'm just stunned. We're still surprised. This cost a lot of time and money to untangle all the deception. It's thought she gambled most of it away at the casino. Today, family members were keen to protect her. Will you be paying the money back at all? Is it time to... Oh, please don't do it. Is it time? Her former boss certainly does want his money returned. It's affected the staff significantly because we haven't had the money to pay them some of the rises they deserve. Since she was charged in February, Ma has been working at the family cafe here just up the road from the Newtown Courthouse, which caused a problem when it came to her sentencing this morning because the magistrate is a regular here. He's now recused himself and Ma will be sentenced by a different magistrate in a different court next week. Evan Batten, 7 News. Paris is starting to show signs of life as it emerges from the COVID lockdown. The French capital's famous cafes and bars are now allowed to reopen earlier than forecast, but only serving patrons on the footpath. I think it's very important for the Parisians. It's important for us. It's important for Paris life in general. It brings back a bit of joy to the streets. In Italy, mass crowds watched Air Force jets complete a colourful lap in honour of those who'd lost their lives to the virus. After hours of hard work and a lot of heavy lifting, Animal Lovers has successfully rescued a stranded bottlenose dolphin at South Arm Beach in Hobart. Rescuers helped hoist the animal into a sling and carry it back up to a dinghy ready for release. The dolphin was freed several hundred metres offshore to the cheers of onlookers. The cruise ship industry was left devastated by the global pandemic. Now it's trying to win back travellers with monster deals, but will it ever recover? That's next. Also, a first look at the new West Connex tunnel. How soon will it open? How a koala and wombat have become lockdown besties. Soon in sport, Tommy Turbo may have lit up the NRL after three rounds, but his own brother says he's not the best. Dry and sunny today and the cold winds are easing. Details soon. I know you'll never let anything bad happen to me. This is a very, very dangerous politician. He's hiding something. There's been an inside man all along. New event drama. Bodyguard, tonight on 7. This extended family might have been spending a lot of time under the same roof this year but they're still continuing their tradition of an epic Sunday lunch. At Energy Australia, we're here to keep the power on so you can keep powering on. Energy Australia, light the way. Hey Google, let me talk to Kia Seltos. Hi, I'm Seltos, Kia's small SUV. Let's chat. What can you get at Kogan.com? You can make a family, bake a family, escape your family, protect your family, destroy your family, entertain your family? Oof, maybe not. Get a quick smart at Kogan.com.
Because you can't get to the gym, we'll bring the gym to you. Booper customers get three months' access to 28 by Sam Wood on us. Booper. Because life happens. Learn more at booper.com.au. With Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance, we guarantee all the repairs we authorise. Hey, good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that, ah, uh... Leon's feeling. Search for a quote today. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of dinner with the Coles Boneless Pork Leg Roast. Down, down to $8.50 a kilo. Save $1.50 a kilo. For delicious roast pork recipes, head to coles.com.au. Coles, good things, great value. This end of financial year, get the Hyundai Tucson with style, impressive performance and intuitive technology. Now with a $1,000 bonus. Hyundai's end of financial year sale. See it to believe it. For a limited time, switch to Energy Australia and get a $50 electricity credit and a $50 gas credit. Plus, with Total Plan, get a total energy bill discount guaranteed. Join Energy Australia today. Checking the markets now, and as we mentioned, investors shrugged off recession talk. The ASX 200 closed 106 points higher. Buy now, pay later stocks were among the top performers. Afterpay hit a new record, up 5.5%. And our dollar is also stronger, buying 69.43 US cents. Fuel prices remain steady. Today's average was $1.3.6 a litre, but you can get regular unleaded for just 95 cents at Villawood. Some may remember when we took the shopping home in paper bags. Well, those days are back. Woolworths has reintroduced them nationally as an alternative to plastic bags. Made from 70% recycled paper and able to carry six kilos of groceries, they cost 20 cents each. As we head into the colder months, this time in the shadow of coronavirus, the Smith family is urging donations for its winter appeal, funding learning support programs for disadvantaged children. These families and young people have been pushed into remote learning. That makes the need even more serious. It aims to raise more than $4 million. The cruise ship industry knows it has a long way to go to regain passengers' trust, but it's confident it can with cheap deals and new health measures. Local companies say it's never been a better time to see Australia and travel Australian. The nation's largest locally owned cruising operator is ready to return to the water. It just needs its Australian customer base to come along for the ride. They're adventurous people and um, you know, renowned for, for roaming, the, uh, roaming the globe. Coral Expeditions has been operating out of Cairns for 35 years. Four ships, all Aussie crew members and stunning destinations to sail, hidden gems on Australian shorelines. There's a good mix of uh, you know, great natural environments, um, history and culture along the way. COVID-19 has ravaged this industry. Experts are confident it can recover with incentives. So companies are promoting dirt cheap prices and reduced deposits. Blue Lagoon Cruises has 70% off deals. Carnival Cruises, 38% off. and Royal Caribbean, 30% off. Above all, the industry is promising passengers can cruise with confidence with a new health framework. And that includes reviewing the screening and the testing options, the new technologies, sanitation. Today's announcement of a long-term economic recession effectively means spending grinds to a halt across most sectors, but especially tourism, where spending is deemed a luxury rather than necessity. Tourism operators right now are battling harder than most to crawl out of this hole. For local companies, the message is plain sailing. Do it a little bit differently and go and see some, some of the, um, you know, the less explored regions of Australia. Robert Ovadia, 7 News. Now for a double dose of cuteness, a koala called Elsa and a wombat named Hope have become unlikely best friends at the Australian Reptile Park. It started when Hope was put in the koala enclosure while hers was being cleaned. They struck up a friendship, greeting each other with Eskimo kisses. The wildlife park has now reopened the public after two months in lockdown. It's taken years of work at a cost of more than $4 billion. Now Sydney's new West Connects tunnel is set to open within weeks. How much time will it save South West Sydney commuters? Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. 
But now Mel is here with Sport. And Mel, a lack of brotherly love between Jake and Tommy Turbo. Yep, completely, Fergo. Jake Trebojevic was quick to give a fierce rival the nod as number one halfback. We'll hear from the Manly star next. Plus, more good news for the Sea Eagles as a rising star knocks back a big money offer. And there could be some good news for punters missing the racetrack as Racing New South Wales takes another huge step forward. You are the best of the best. In the grand final challenge. Big calls, big risks. They'll build a home from scratch. They're going to do whatever it takes. The toughest race to the finish ever. It is just the hardest race to the finish line we've ever had. The winner takes it all. The winner of our high stakes grand final is... Grand final challenge tonight, 7.30. The power's in your hands and at your feet. The BMW 320i sedan from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. Let's talk about health insurance and how you could be paying for things you don't need. Comparing might even save you money. OK, I'll do it for you. Take the ugh out of saving. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. Coming up next, energy prices. No! Tough times don't excuse tougher times at home. Even in crisis, there's no place for abuse or domestic violence. If you or someone you know is affected, Help is available online and by phone 24-7. For free, confidential advice, support and counselling for women and men, contact 1-800-RESPECT. There's no place for abuse or domestic violence. Help is here. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. The Good Guys Doorbuster deals are on now. This Hisense 58 inch TV only $7.95. This Bosch dishwasher only $8.95. This Dyson V11 motorhead vacuum only $9.49. And this chest freezer for $3.95. Plus, loads more only at The Good Guys. Little things add up in retirement. Are you confident you can pay for them? Using part of your super or savings, invest in a Challenger Lifetime annuity and you'll enjoy guaranteed income for life. Find out more at challenger.com.au. Hey, Powerball is now at three million dollars. Are you keen? Well, first you have to play. Play now in store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. For a limited time, switch to Energy Australia and get a $50 electricity credit and a $50 gas credit. Plus, with Total Plan, get a total energy bill discount guaranteed. Join Energy Australia today. Let's compare health insurance. You might even save some money. OK, I'll do it. Take the out of saving. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect. 7 News has 50 family passes to give away to the reopening Sydney Zoo. Go to 7news.com.au slash Sydney Zoo with tonight's code word. Welcome back. Moses Suley says he knocked back a multi-million dollar offer from the Dragons because he believes Manly is building towards Premiership glory in a big boost ahead of their clash with the high-flying Eels. 21-year-old Suley has extended his contract until the end of 2022. Moses Suley re-signed with Manly because he had a debt to repay. When I had nothing, they gave me a shot. Um, and um, since, since I've been here, I've, I've never wanted to go anywhere else. Sacked by the Bulldogs in 2018 for poor discipline, Suley was given a lifeline by the Seagulls and the rest is history. The 21-year-old knocked back a multi-million dollar offer from the Dragons because he senses something special on the northern beaches. Hopefully make it all the way. Um, I'd love to win a premiership here. So, um... Yeah, this, that's one reason why I stayed. Loyalty wasn't a factor for teammate Jake Trebojevic when asked if brother Tom is now the best fullback in the game. I'm going to have to say no to that one. You look at James Tedesco's last couple of years, um, coming off you know two premierships, a Dally M, so I have to give that one to Teddy. Tedesco led the Roosters to their first win of the season against Souths last week. The two-time defending premiers face the Broncos at Suncorp Stadium tomorrow night. I've done a little bit on, on, on Brisbane this week, but... 
you know, early season, we really want to uh, nail our footy. Despite the Premier's masterclass against the Rabbitohs, coach Trent Robinson says his side's a long way off from where he wants them to be. We trust our guys. We believe in the way that they uh, prepare and play. Um, and we've got to ask for improvement. Victor Radley is free to play after beating a dangerous throw charge at the judiciary. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. Well, the Panthers say they'll keep throwing the ball to rookie playmaker Matt Burton when the game is on the line. Burton had an afternoon to forget in Penrith's golden point draw against the Knights, missing five shots at field goal. But teammates insist the 20-year-old's confidence has not been shaken. We had all our trust in, in Berto and um, I actually thought he, his kicking game was really good throughout the game until that, um, yeah, that last bit. He was a bit down about it, but, um, you know, we just kept him positive to keep his... Um, Head higher. The Panthers take on the Warriors in Campbelltown on Friday night. Well, the head coach of the Australian swim team is walking away from the job for family reasons. After nearly seven years in charge, Jakob Verheeren will return to his homeland, the Netherlands, in September. Swimming Australia was unable to convince him to stay on for an extra year after the Tokyo Olympics were postponed. In high performance, you can't compromise, so you can't have your head coach being regularly overseas and high performance here, so that wouldn't be a good choice. Respected Olympic team coach Rowan Taylor will take over in September. Well, like so many elite athletes, surfer Julian Wilson's world has been turned upside down by COVID-19. This was going to be the biggest year of my career and a lot of planning had been put into place. The 31-year-old was supposed to spearhead Australia's Olympic assault in Japan. Instead, he fears this year's championship tour may be lost entirely. We need unrestricted travel and all the borders to be opened up and I don't know, it looks like that's a little ways away yet. Wilson does say though the long layoff may help extend his career. Well they fought to keep the sport going during the pandemic and now Racing New South Wales is leading the way again when it comes to getting fans back on track. For the first time since early March owners can attend Saturday's meeting at Randwick. Special thermal imaging cameras will be used to detect anyone with an elevated body temperature. Strict measures being put in place, but we're, we're very excited to have people coming back to the track. The Randwick meeting is a part of seven Saturday racing coverage, along with the Group 1 Stradbroke handicap in Brisbane. So plenty more racing still to come on the screens of seven, Fergo. But, geez, they're leading the way, aren't they? Getting the fans back, and you wouldn't want to put it past Peter Volandis. Just need to buy a horse to get through the front gate. Well, good luck. Just tell us who it is. Thank you, Mel. Drivers have been given their first animated look at Sydney's next road project, the $4 billion M5 tunnel duplication. The twin tunnels will link Beverly Hills with St Peter's and beyond, and they're opening within weeks. A virtual look at a road revolution. New M5 tunnels, now dubbed the M8, connecting to an interchange at St Peter's, and they're set to open in as early as six weeks. You can see the signs on the, the lanes on the roadways. It really does give you that virtual experience. Drivers urged to plan their trip on the West Connects website. When these new tunnels open up, there is a significant change to the local road network. The M5 is Sydney's most congested motorway. The tunnels set to cut up to half an hour from the journey between Liverpool and the city. What West Connects is doing here is open heart bypass surgery on the Sydney network. The catch, it'll cost you. The car toll for the M8 will be an eye-watering $6.95, no cash back. The existing airport link will be tolled too at the same price. That's on top of current tolls for the M5. New interchanges here and at St Peter's will be complicated. Transport authorities hoping we don't see a repeat of what happened when the new M4 tunnels opened. Confused drivers putting their cars in reverse to avoid them. Underground, 28 road headers are carving out a link between the M4 and the M5. The good thing is this is another piece in the jigsaw. Stage three, set to open in 2023. Serena Andaloro, Seven News. David is back now. Brownie, it was nice in the sun today. Yeah, lots of mild winter sun today, Fergo. Cloud about tomorrow and somewhat colder. Local forecast, next. Seven Sydney's David Brown is a forecasting meteorologist certified by the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. And he's only on Seven News. I've never seen anything like this. On a
brand new night, which spectacular acts will blow you away. You're fearless. Incredibly beautiful. Get ready for one hell of a night. That was the moment we'd be waiting for. New Britain's Got Talent, Thursday, 7.30. What can you get at Kogan.com? You can make a family, bake a family, escape your family, protect your family, destroy your family, entertain your family? Oof, maybe not. Get a quick smart at Kogan.com. Keithy Turnips up next, he flies, the ball's nowhere near him! Sucked in, safe dodger! Catch this instead. For NRL this week, lead by four points or more at halftime and we'll pay you out straight away. Four up, you win with Sportsbet. When we look back on these days, let's remember what we found. Because when all we have is time, what we find is each other. We're here to support you. And we can. Together. Are you ready to quit smoking? Ready to start tasting again? Ready to stop coughing? Are you ready to get your breath back and start saving money? When you quit smoking, things improve quickly. When you quit, you win. Get the top 10 tips to quit successfully at iCanQuit.com.au or to talk to a qualified counsellor, call Quitline on 13 78 48. some of your data to kids who need it most and power their potential. Customers in New South Wales told us that they saved on average $301 when they switched their combined home and contents insurance online to Budget Direct. So why not get a Budget Direct quote today? Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. Receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card when you sign up to a new service on the Optus $65 per month SIM-only plan for 24 months with 80 gigabytes of data for use in Oz. That's right. Sign up to a new service on the $65 per month 24-month Optus SIM-only plan and you'll receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card. Offer ends June 30. New services only, not available with other offers. Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. When the road calls... Here's the very best way to answer. The BMW X3 S Drive 20i from 69900 Drive Away. Joy is coming. 19 years, six months was the day that I found out that I was a dad. This is for you, my son. Home and away, weeknights on seven. This weather report brought to you by the BMW 3 Series. Tonight's 7 News headlines, close to 10,000 people have now been arrested in America's violent uprising as protesters defied curfews again. A Sydney police officer is being threatened with private legal action if he's not charged over the forceful arrest of an Indigenous teenager. Australia is in recession for the first time in almost 30 years and the Treasurer says the worst is yet to come. A food delivery rider has been viciously attacked by a man demanding money at Wentworthville. Drivers across the state are being warned random breath testing is back ahead of the June long weekend. And the cruise ship industry is offering incredible deals, 70% off to get passengers back on board. Now with the latest on our weather, here's David. Yeah, thanks very much, Fugo. Plenty of sunshine today and a warmer day than forecast. In fact, the top was 19.5 degrees during lunch, following a low there of around 8.9. And once again, there was only a small variation in maxima across the Sydney Basin, although it was rather frosty in Richmond this morning, dropping down to 1 degree. As we go to the satellite, we have this uh, cold front that's sweeping across the uh, Tasman Sea. It's been pushed along by this uh, strong to gale force southerly airstream. Now, the weather is, well, clear across our state at the moment, partly cloudy conditions. 
conditions, atmospheric pressure is starting to rise. Yep, there's a new high on the way. So as we go to the forecast chart, you'll notice that high building. The thing that stands out, the cold winds will moderate. That is the spacing between the isobars is quite simply opening up. So the winds will start to drop out. I think uh, given the proximity of the high over our state, we'll see quite an extensive mix of frost first thing tomorrow morning and a few fog patches as well. But in the longer term, well, this is our forecast for the next seven days. The thing that stands out, there's virtually no rain around. In fact, the best falls are expected along the northern coast. Nationwide tomorrow, lots of sunshine again in Brisbane and a forecast of around 22 degrees. Melbourne cold and clear, light wind at around 14 degrees. Clear skies for Adelaide and 15. Perth, fine, sunny and a forecast maximum somewhere around 25 degrees. Now, strong wind warning covers the entire coast tomorrow, but you'll notice the winds are expected to moderate from the south as the day wears on. It'll be a fine day, apart from those isolated brief showers that's clipping the far north coast and, of course, widespread inland morning frost. Look at that, Parks and Griffiths down to zero degrees. In fact, there are quite a few zeros there. Light frosts are also possible in pockets of the outer west first thing. And then a fine, partly cloudy day to follow. That what we're looking at at the moment is shower activity. The bulk of it, of course, is remaining offshore. So partly cloudy conditions, a little more cloud than today. That's why we're expecting temperatures to be a few degrees cooler. Coastal waters improving. That strong southerly should eventually moderate to around 10 to 15 knots by around about mid to late afternoon for the city. Remaining dry, partly cloudy day. Forecast top around 17 degrees, which is very close to average for this time of year. Moving on to that seven day outlook, early fog in our west on Friday, then a sunny day to follow. A similar day is expected to unfold on Saturday, then a few coastal showers unfolding on Sunday. So that's the latest weather studies as she goes until Sunday, Fergo. Cool but calm. Indeed. Thank you, Brownie. That is seven news for this Wednesday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a great night.